JavaScript is the language that Google Tag Manager is based on and therefore really cool to know if you are working in GTM. So if you want to be more effective, work more safely and faster in GTM, you should definitely know these five JavaScript commands that I'm about to show you. Let's dive in. All right, to get started, we want to look at a very simple command that you should definitely know inside of Google Tag Manager and it's called data layer. Now let's say a friend sends you a website and says my tracking doesn't work. You know that the data layer is the basis of Google Tag Manager and often the values that you find inside of the data layer make up all the tracking that is later happening. So the first step to check a tracking deployment is to actually look at the data layer. But what if you don't have access to the tag assistant or don't want to go through the hassle of logging in and so on? Well, you can quickly go to a website, open up the developer tools, which you can do with a shortcut or up here, you can click on more tools and then your developer tools right here. And I'll put this to the side, enter a little command called data layer needs to be with the capital L and small d at the beginning. And then you can look into what is in the data layer, which information do we have here? Do we have the right information for the tracking that needs to happen? So when I add to cart, do I have add to cart information in here? Well, we actually need to update this after we have done an action. So all I can do is press the up arrow here. And we see we have now seven things inside of the data layer. And one of them is the add to cut. So the information is there and we could troubleshoot even further or end the story right there because the data layer is not set up. So if you need a quick way to check the data layer without extensions, without the tag assistant, just type in data layer to your JavaScript console. Now the next command that you should definitely know when you're working Google Tag Manager with JavaScript is the data layer dot push. Now data layer push is a special command that is attached to the data layer and it fills the data layer with information. So you need to definitely know how to use this because the data layer push uses as an argument, an object with a key and a value. Press enter and it will be pushed to the data layer. If we look into the data layer again, we now see our key value pair here inside of the data layer and we could use it in our tracking as well. Now, where would a command like this be useful to actually know? Well, if you want to build a data layer and push custom information into the data layer, you definitely need to know how to write a data layer. There's a lot of specifics about how to write a data layer and how to design it. But this command can be perfect if you just want to try out your tracking. If you have already built tags that listen to a certain data layer event, for example, like purchase, can simply go in here and say that our key is the event and then we put this as purchase, press enter and then in our tag assistant we should see our purchase right here with the information that was pushed. So we can try out data layer be pushes beforehand, especially when you are seeing a data layer online and you want to, for example, install something like the purchase tracking here. You can look at this and try this out beforehand by copying the command and then simply filling it into the JavaScript console and seeing how this now affects your data layer, what you get as a message, for example, if you want to change anything around or if you might have a data layer just like this one, I'm going to copy this and put this in you might see that there is an unexpected error that happened. Something inside of the data layer isn't right and you'll be able to correct your mistake before you send it to the developer. So in our case here, you can actually look this up and we see right here in this line, there's an error. The error actually happens in the line beforehand. There was a comma that was forgotten inside of the data layer and the whole thing fails. So in order to fix this, we could go in and write this again and then let's look where the error is right here, put in the comma and voila, now it works. And it's very handy to know about this data layer push functionality in order to design your own data layers, try out data layer syntax before you give it over to a developer and find errors this way.
Next up, we have the query selector method. Now, this is a method that is very important for Google Tag Manager because it lets us select certain things on the page, certain elements on the page. But we need a little bit of background of CSS in order to know how to select an element. Once you know a little bit of CSS, it shouldn't be hard to utilize this selector method. So let's say you want to get the price from this page. You can always right click and go to inspect element. Now, this is actually what the query selector already does. It finds an element on the page and looks and returns it to you so you can do further operations on it. So in our case, here we have 18 and there is WooCommerce price currency symbol. Here's the price class. So we see how it's marked up down here. We also have an indication of how it's actually marked up. And we can now utilize the query selector to test our CSS selector so we can transfer it over to Google Tag Manager. So for example, we could go in here, let me just get rid of this, and we can write document dot query selector. And then in parentheses and quotation marks, we can enter our CSS selector. Now again, this takes a little bit of knowledge of CSS. In our case, here we have a class called price. So we can put in price press enter and it will give us this class back, which is the price itself, but with the dollar signs and so on. So maybe we can go even deeper here, go into the span and then BDI. So let's do that. We go into the span and then BDI. And then we only get our 18 right here, which we can pull out, for example, the text content later on. Now, where is this actually useful? Well, this is the CSS selector that now you can use in different places inside of GTM. Now that we have tested it and know what it actually selects, we can go over to Google Tag Manager and for example, build something that will pull out exactly that text by going into the user defined variables and creating a DOM element variable. The DOM element variable takes an ID or a CSS selector, exactly that. So the query selector is what we want to enter here. And we can give this all a name and then have that in there. Also, we have a trigger available that uses CSS selector. So you might have heard of the element visibility trigger that has a selection method because you need to run it on a specific HTML element and we can put in the element selector here. Again, this needs to be a CSS selector that is exactly what Google Tag Manager will use, the query selector method in order to find your element selection. And then also inside of the filters that you have inside of your triggers, you have the option here to use matches CSS selector. And here again, you can use the query selector method that we have discovered. So before I use any of these methods, I always go in and utilize this on the document node so document.querySelector and I test out what are the actual CSS selectors that will bring me my desired result in order to fill my variables, my triggers, or even inside of my tags, I can utilize this query selector method. So it's very important to know this as a GTM user. Next up, the Google Tag Manager object. We did a full video on this one already. But where I find it particularly useful is when we are looking again at the data layer. Now earlier I told you you can use utilize the data layer command and that will give you your data layer. But this is actually not the internal model of Google Tag Manager because this is an object on the page itself. Google Tag Manager has an internal representation of the data layer as we might know it. And to that we have for example variables which can be differently than the data layer itself. So when you want to access the internal data model of Google Tag Manager with JavaScript, you utilize a command called Google underscore tag underscore manager. And then in the square brackets, you need to set up your GTM ID that you usually have up here, right here. You can also do on the page itself. If you start the square bracket, it will already give you a suggestion of what it found in the namespace. So you can just press the right arrow and it will auto fill it. And then you are accessing the internal data model of Google Tag Manager. What we can do here is multifold, but what I find really useful 
is to look at the data layer itself, so the internal data layer, and we can get a variable. What do we fill into the get command right here? We can fill anything in that we would fill into a DLV, a data layer variable that you might be used to from going here into your variables and creating a no new data layer variable. So anything that you would fill in here, you can fill in right here as well. So if you wanted to get, for example, let's go into the data layer and see what kind of elements we have here, ecommerce.currency code, we would fill this normally in here, build a variable out of it. But with this command, we can test it right out and say ecommerce.currency code. Press enter and we can see it gives us back exactly what is written in the internal data model. So we can utilize this as an alternative to data layer variables. We can test our data layer variables beforehand, but also use it as a alternative. Where does this come in handy? Well, if you utilize inside of Google Tag Manager, for example, we have here a custom JavaScript variable, which pulls the product price out of the data layer itself. This is marked up right here as ecommerce.items.0.price. You can just copy this. And then inside of my custom JavaScript variable, I can totally replace this with Google Tag Manager. And then in parentheses, we can actually utilize a built-in variable. Well, I don't have this. Let me go back here, configured. We have our container ID, which we can also utilize. So again, Google underscore tag manager. And then we can fill this in with a variable, our container ID variable, and then data layer dot get and in parentheses, our ecommerce.items.0.price. Now you might say, well, this is pretty much, much longer than the other version, but you don't have to go in and create multiple variables, especially when you have something that you just quickly want to pull into one variable. It might be easier to write this out and you're not using as much space inside of your Google Tag Manager account. It might make it also easier to read in that sense as well. So this works exactly the same way and it's now implemented inside of our variable. We can also utilize the same method inside of our tags. So getting our data layer variable or checking our data layer variable from this menu directly with this Google Tag Manager object command makes my life easier because I can quickly check something and how it's resolved without having to create a data layer variable. You can, by the way, utilize several other methods inside of the Google Tag Manager object. For example, to reset the data layer, we've done a complete video and walkthrough on this one as well, which I'm going to link up in the description down below. And finally, let's talk about number five, which is the IFI, the immediate invoked function expression. This is this little code right here. Where can this be useful and why should you use it? Well, inside of your page, you might have noticed that we use certain keywords that you kind of have to remember in order to access certain things like Google Tag Manager. And these are kind of reserved keywords. Now, hopefully they will not be used by any other program, by any other scripts, but you might know that there might be many, many different scripts running on your page and all of them are competing for the space where hopefully you have a unique name. This is the global variable space. Now, if you use some reserved keywords, you could overwrite it. So for example, if I put in data layer here on my page, we see that it says, hello, shouldn't it show us what we've seen before with the data layer object? Well, that's actually because I have written a faulty little custom JavaScript code here, which overrides the data layer with a bad written syntax. Now you should not use data layer if possible and any other reserved keyword here or name for your variables. But in order to make sure, especially if you have long codes and you don't actually have written the code or just copying it from somebody else, you should definitely utilize something called an iffy, immediate invoked function expression. What this does, it creates a context for your code to run in that is closed off from the global variable space. So you don't have the danger of overwriting anything. So we can put this iffy in here and then run our little code inside of this iffy and this will make it much safer 
for the global variable space. So if we try this out, we should now see that if we look for the data layer, it's not overwritten, everything is still working fine because our custom JavaScript runs in a completely different context than the global variable scope. So as a tip, remember this little syntax here to run your custom HTML code in an iffy to avoid conflicts in the future. Hold on, I'm not done with the video yet. I got a bonus number six for you. So far we have talked about the data layer, the data layer push, the query selector, and then the Google Tag Manager object. And last but not least, we had the iffy. Now bonus number six has something to do with our click trigger and relative click variables. I'll show you all about this topic in this video right over there. So see you there.